Just because a new format has begun doesn't mean that we don't have a few oddities left talking about, like praying kids runic, A, B, C, ah, I wonder how these are going to evolve. Make sure you guys smash the like crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. Yes, this is Mutamorphosis in Praying Kids of all things. So uh, I, we have just a very few amount of decks that kind of remain from videos I had set aside. And I was like, you know, I still want to talk about this. I want to be able to, you know, have an interesting conversation with the interactions with Mutamorphosis being able to tribute a, hmm... You know, one of, uh, one of, uh, you know, the, the little monster friends back here that you can kind of interact with. And then bring out, you know, one of our other little friends along the way here. Um, not necessarily something that I, I thought people would try to reverse engineer out here. The fact that you could basically tribute a fusion monster. Huh. Level four. Huh. Well, you know, hmm. Level two, you know, it's it's the the little ideas out here being able to convert these monsters into other little things and try to cheese out something hmm, maybe maybe a little bit more interesting. Actually, that's it's kind of interesting. I mean, being able to convert a Hoogan to a Dropsies, you know, being able to convert a Gary if you really need to into a Roxies, it's not necessarily something that you think about out here in terms of wow, suddenly you know. Even though this card is unsearchable, which, understandable, I get it, you know, a lot of people are a little bit against unsearchable cards, but this basically goes, hey, you know, you see this, after you do full runic combo, well, suddenly, well, congratulations, we're now able to go down full Prank Kids line and still be able to do full combo. And, of course, I mean, this card's 100% going to sit around here, going to put a big smile on people's faces, and people are going to genuinely be, well, um, the word I'm going to say is, surprised and they're going to have fun playing against challengers like this in today's meta yeah <laughs> i just wanted praying gets to be a, a fully legal deck also the fact meow meow mew didn't come back is a little bit disappointing but you know we'll take the good with the bad here all right a b c dragon buster and friends so one of the big things that this deck still has going for it is i mean if you still want to be a rogue contender out here and you still want the chance to actually try to keep up with the minute, you have no problem doing so. All right, like you have the easiest adjustments in the world, and it's just okay, deck's good to go. I do like the fact though that because Ancient Fairy Dragon does exist as a card, you know, converting through whichever field spell line that you need to see to be able to set up the optimal play. You know, do I need to go down, you know, the discard route for this? Do I need to see this? Do I need to get to the disc Coliseum to get the Regulus on? It's all going to depend on initial lines and board breakers. Now, the other cool thing is. Uh, this deck inherently just crystal wings up anyway because Mr. Revolution Synchron here just allows you to do so. Like This is the free revive that you want to see and to top things off. I mean, and anytime you can have crystal wing protecting your board, also, I mean, always seems good. Uh, also, this build I do think was a lot further ahead of its time than I think people kind of realize out here. I do think the Droplet is going to be a very serious contender out here as we kind of head on into this new barren wasteland of a meta where you're going to be looking and trying to find all of these ways to basically try to board break your opponent and at least make sure that, you know, whatever end board they're ending on, you'll be able to play around relatively easily. That's going to be the thing that Droplet is going to guarantee you that you'll be able to do. So, honestly, I think that ABC as a deck doesn't really have anything really too much to worry about here. Um, and of course, hey, we're still doing bike steel interactions. It's all have the best going second cards. And basically, if you need to have drolls or something like the, these, if you need to ship those into the main deck to be able to kind of counteract the meta over things like maybe the imperms, it's not an issue. You can do so. This deck has a lot of interchangeability, and that's going to be a very good thing. Oh, boy. So, Dynamorphia. The first thing I want to tell you is I am ecstatic that the back row monster that this deck is was unscathed all right remember though we're, we're kind of heading into a format that this deck might actually just randomly die to ash blossom and joyous spring i that's one of the things i'm kind of 
worried about, you know, well, this doesn't really matter because you're just going to go ahead and start setting everything that you want anyway. Um, the biggest things that this deck, I guess, is kind of going to have to overcome is, you know, the pure amount of hand traps, but this build's playing Fossil Dig, so you can tutor into the Misk anyway, so if you need to play around something, good old Misk here is going to basically allow you to do so. Uh, Misk is actually pretty good <laughs> for this deck. I, um, obviously, you've got builds that will just choose not to play Misk. They'll just choose to play the five here. They'll get the Fossil Digs. They'll play additional trap cards that's fine you basically make your decision tree based on what you want to play and that's going to be just fine i also see here hello dino wrestler nuggies i also see here that this build is playing an ultimate conductor down here in the side um i can't tell you the last time man it was in the very early stages i think of playing this deck um i did try the ultimate conductor it was very fun um you just got to know like you've got to be able to know that like you can't, you really aren't gonna, you kind of have to hard draw this guy. There was a time where it'd be like, maybe you could test out Hobie Raptor to win this deck and be able to toggle for the ultimate conductor. But this is one of those things. It's like, once you get a, a mini piece of the puzzle going, and if you do see the ultimate conductor of like a duality or something for like the follow up turn, this guy's gonna help you, you know, do some huge damage. Especially when you have all this huge back row back here. This card actually does shut out games with this. And being able to lower your opponent's attack points and then be able to ultimate conductor go to town is not something that should be allowed, but it is. Volcanics going second. Now, one of the things that um, I do think that a lot of people are gonna have a hard time kind of understanding out here. Yes, this build did have Lingaribo in it. You go ahead and you gut this. It's, you have the way, look, look at all these other little options that you have out here. All right, you have the Animas, you have the Almirage. Th this getting cut from this build does not change a single thing whatsoever because you have so many other options available to you. The one thing that does hurt, at least with the logic of this is, hey, Pond of Extrav was this deck's main source of draw power as you're filtering around. You'll be able to adjust and play this deck very, very well. I actually kind of think Volcanic's gonna be a little bit of a sleeper choice for this coming forward meta here that people are gonna have to realize and go, huh, you know, if I'm gonna get Volcanic FTK'd out, here what in the world am i supposed to do it yes it is a lot of solitaire but we're heading into a format that once again is projected to be way more hand trap heavy all right if you're going to be seeing way more hand traps available in the meta then basically things are going to slow down that's well going to be the point so having a deck like volcanics out here that might be aiming to ftk or try to do degeneracy along that way shouldn't be a lot it's gonna have some issues uh, we're still sticking to Double Emperor, which is pretty normal. I do think that this build playing the Volcanic Queen is actually pretty cool. I think most of these builds I've seen will push the Volcanic Queen to the side deck. But being able to basically access this and go, hey, you know, we can take advantage of this, no problem. Having access to an in-house monster to read over your opponent's stuff. Kaijus are always going to be a very fun thing. Um, outside of that, I mean, I also do like the One Foolish Barrel Goods in here for, you know, the, the little reload. But outside of that, interesting stuff. Who knows, all right? The volcanic world is an evolving place and I'm super excited to see what's next. And our last list here was the power of Mech Knights with Harpoor. Now remember, Harpoor just came back to three. If you're looking at explain or trying out things, I also, you know, we have Ragnarika coming very, very shortly. A lot more people are going to be exploring that deck and wanting to have some fun and it's going to be a huge showcase out here. I, the only thing I'm kind of curious about is, you know, would you up the Harp Horror count in this build? I probably would, honestly, because you want to make sure that you can get to the pieces and do your thing. Also, this build did naturally play a 14-card extra deck. We didn't get the Lingaribo or anything. No, 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 no. All right, we, we inherently, this was what they were trying to do out here. I see the, you know, double trade in for filtering. You're still doing the Snake Eye stuff. We do have the solid reasoning out here to be able to turbo gas, gas, gas. And, of course, this, it's an interesting idea. Being able to try out the Odotic stuff, I, I do very much mean what I've said in the past. This deck is definitely the local buster. All right, you're playing against yourself about 100% of the time in terms of consistency. Do you keep in mind, uh, way more hand traps are probably going to be, you know, relevant out here. So if you get your Snake Rain ashed, well, it's... It's just kind of the cutoff. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. The good news is Snake Rain's not once per turn. So, you know, if one does get Ash and you have enough to keep going, well, you know, you can probably still combo up and still try to make a little bit of a board, but we'll have to wait and see. It's definitely 
this new format it definitely gives me some vibes for excitement i'll have to wait and see how things go but that's what we're looking at so far so please leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think and i'll see your beautiful faces back here in day guys peace patrons thank you <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.